Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Josh, and this is Learning to Read Ancient Sumerian, Lesson 7. Today we are going to look at Sumerian verbs and how they were formed in the past tense. Like, subscribe, come along for the ride. Welcome back everyone to Learning to Read Sumerian. This is Lesson 7. Today we're going to look at transitive verbs that are formed in the past tense. We're going to do a brief review of transitive verbs. Then we'll look at how they form singular verbs and then how they form plural verbs. And finally, of course, we'll look at our vocabulary exercises and the signs for this lesson. So a brief review of transitive verbs. In English, when we say a sentence like Jimmy runs, where Jimmy is the subject, but he's not doing an action to something else, we call that an intransitive verb. So Jimmy runs, Sally walks, Nancy swims. These are all intransitive verbs because they don't take a direct object. You're not doing something. The subject isn't doing something to something else. However, in the sentence, Bob hit the ball, the ball is the direct object of the verb hit. So the subject, Bob, is doing something to another thing, the direct object. So we call that a transitive verb. Jimmy threw the baseball. Frank ate his food. These are all verbs that are transitive, where the subject is acting upon, is doing something to a direct object. And of course, Sumerian has the same sort of distinction. Um, A3 means to go out, which is an intransitive verb. So, Gudea went out. That's it. He's not going out something, right? There's no object. There's no direct object there. However, Gudea built the temple. Do three, build, is a transitive verb because you have to build something. Sumerian distinguishes the way that it forms intransitive verbs and transitive verbs. And we're going to see the markers for transitive verbs in the past tense today. Before we begin, we want to talk about the distinction between subject and agent in Sumerian. In English, if there's a subject of a transitive verb or the subject of an intransitive verb, we write them the same way. We say them the same way. Jimmy hits the ball. Jimmy walks. There's no distinction in how we write the word Jimmy. It stays the same. And we call him the subject, right? He's the subject of the sentence. However, in Sumerian, if you have a subject of an intransitive verb, for example, Jimmy walks, we call Jimmy in that sentence the subject, like we do in English. However, the subject of a transitive verb, they call that the agent. He's doing something to something else. If you have a subject with an intransitive verb, they'll refer to that as the subject of that verb, the subject of the sentence. However, if that thing or that person is the subject of a transitive verb, they'll call that the agent, not the subject. So a subject governs an intransitive verb. An agent is in a transitive sentence, sentence with a transitive verb. The agent is usually marked with the ergative, and we've covered all this before in previous lessons, but it's good to know the terminology here. If you're reading through a Sumerian grammar, you'll see that when they talk about the subject of a sentence, they're referring to a sentence that has an intransitive verb in it. The moment that the subject in the sentence starts acting upon something else, it becomes an agent. That's what they refer to it as. And the reason they do that is because in Sumerian, they distinguish between the subject of an intransitive verb and the agent of a transitive verb by marking it with an E for the ergative. So in the sentence Lugal A, A2 Mu'undu 3, what we have here is the E marking Lugal, and it's telling you that this is an agent in this sentence. What the agent means is that it's the subject of a transitive verb. 
And of course, do three means to build, a two means house. So the king built the house. The king is the agent in this sentence because this is a transitive verb. If you remember with intransitive verbs, they put endings on the verbs. So n, n, nothing, and then n, zen, and esh. That's how they mark it by putting these endings after the verbal base. In transitive forms, in the past tense, they'll usually put a letter before the verbal base. So in the first person singular, they don't write anything, right? And I'm representing that here with a zero mark. So if you saw mu gub, that could be I stood, like I stood something up. Gub means to stand or to make stand. There's nothing written before the verbal base in the first person singular. In the second person singular, you, they write an E before the verbal base. So, mu e gub, you stood up something. So, mu gub, I stood up something. Mu e gub, you singular stood up something. And as we've seen a thousand times thus far, in the third person singular, ham tu, uh, they'll put an N before the verbal base. So we've seen mu un do three a whole bunch, he built. Well, that N before the verbal base is how they tell you that the agent in this sentence is a third person singular animate. It's a person or a god. It's not an animal or an object. So mu un gub, that represents mu, N gub. He or she stood something up. However, if you do have an object or an animal doing something, they won't use an N before the verbal base. They will use a B. So instead of mu un gub, you will see mu ub gub, which represents mu b gub. It stood up something. So the marks that appear in the hum to or the, the past tense, singular, they come before the verbal base. The verbal base in this form is gub. And in the first person, there's nothing before the verbal base. In the second singular, there's an E before the verbal base. In the third singular, animate, a human or um, a god, there's an N before the verbal base. And in the third person, singular, inanimate, you have a B before the verbal base. So nothing, E, N, B. Those are the singular forms. Now in the plural, they combine the marker that goes before the verbal base that you see here and the endings that were put on for intransitive verbs. So if we had N, den, N, zen, and esh in the intransitive forms and you had zero, E, N, in the transitive singular forms. They just combine those here. So nothing, verbal base, and den. That's the first plural, we. So if we want to say we stood something up, mu, gu, be, en, de, three, en, which would represent mu, zero, if you remember zero from the first person singular before the verbal base, gub, and then en, den, that first plural ending. If you wanted to say you, second person plural, you would have the E from the second person singular before the verbal base and the NZEN from the second person plural intransitive ending that we saw. So E, NZEN. So mu e gub be en zetu en would be mu e gub NZEN. You stood up, plural. And then finally, N verbal base esh is the third plural. So if you saw mu un gub esh or gub be esh, you would read that mu n gub esh. The n before and the esh coming after tell the reader that that is a third plural. They stood up. They made stand. And those are your plural hamtu forms. So nothing n den a. Enzen and en esh. 
before and after the verbal base. So in summary, intransitive verbs do not have a direct object that the subject does something to. So an intransitive verb would be like Johnny walks or Sally swims. A transitive verb uh, has a subject, which we refer to in Sumerian as the agent, doing something to a direct object. So Johnny hits the ball. Johnny would be the agent of that sentence. The past tense or hum to verbs have forms before and sometimes after the verbal base. So in the singular, you have nothing, e, n, b, and in the plural, you have nothing, n, n, e, n, z, and n, esh. Not the vocabulary. She, grain, e, three, oil, im, clay, inim, word, iti, with the dial slout, month, tear, forest, tush, to sit, nang, to drink, namtar, as a compound verb, to decree a fate, ninda, bread, kosh, beer, ka, mouth, zig three, to rise or to raise. Shu zig three as a compound verb means to raise the hand or to pray. Gu seven to eat. And finally, peering lion. Your exercises for this lesson Lu to a, a to a, she, mu un nyar. Luga lene, e three, mu un detu esh. Gu three detu a, kash, b two in nang. Peering, edenta, ba ta nyen. Peering a, udu, mu ub gu seven. Finally, dinger utu ra, an she three, shu, ba a zig three, ge n zetu n. And your signs for this lesson mul, arad, bar, ru, ig, N, do, and gin seven. Until next time, resist poor scholarship. Always ask, how do you know that? <laughs>